Here's a clip from Tara Buster with Tara Devlin. Doing nothing is the best we can do because we're Americans. Get up. Get up, everyone. Do it because we're American. We could do anything here except that, except what we need to do, except and guarantee health care as a right, except not allow a, a generation of Americans to come out of college as indentured servants to the banks, except that, except stop endless wars. We could do anything except that. We could do anything except tax the rich. We could do anything except have the progressive policies that built the middle class because you know what? That's too far left now in an oligarchy. When you're hanging by a precipice, you're on the precipice. You're not even, ha- are you hanging by the precipice? You're in a freaking precipice and you're spinning, spinning, spinning and tumbling down. And that light at the end of the tunnel, that's, not, that's an oncoming train. You're, far, you're so far down. We're in Dante's fifth circle of hell. It's, and the trap door just opened and we're plummeting down. Because on one side, we have Twitler. On the other side, we have another Republican who I guess is better. But guess what? It is better, right? Okay, it's better to stop. But the problem is... Trump is not the problem. He is a symptom. And the, the problem is everything that Joe Biden stands for for the past 40 years. And he is not an element, an agent of change. He is, he is the stopgap to fascism, but also the greased wheels of fascism. Because by the time Joe Biden's done... If we get to the other side, let's say he is elected, the next fascist who gets in there, the next Republican, because it will happen, because if Joe Biden's going to get in there and people are going to be like, fuck this, I voted for change. I've been voting for change my whole goddamn life, and I've gotten nothing. And now, not only less than nothing, because before, at least, the middle class was over 50% of the population, now it's less than 50%, and we keep getting worse. And there's no relief coming. And it's nothing, nothing's going to change. But all I see is the rich getting richer and nothing ever being done of, of, about fixing this goddamn democracy and bringing America into, uh, uh, to actualize the promises of the founding documents, e pluribus unum, pledging our lives, fortunes, and sacred honor to each other. What is that? That's too pie in the sky. We need m- more money for less people. This is what the Democratic Party stands for. That's what it seems to me. Because I keep asking Democrats. I'm a, they say, I'm a real Democrat. You know, talking about themselves. I'll vote for Joe Biden because he's a real Democrat. Well, what the F is a real Democrat nowadays? Because in my, I grew up uh, under the delusion that Democrats were people who stood for the working class, that they wouldn't sit by and give speeches to Goldman Sachs while the middle class slipped further down on the, on the ladder. Uh, they slipped another rung down. They wouldn't sit there and say, while there's a goddamn coronavirus and the American people have... There are 85 million Americans who have no health care or are underinsured that they wouldn't sit by and say, I got a plan that keeps the for-profit racket in business, the, the racket that's killing us, that has, that has doctors without borders setting up emergency medical weekends in American towns. It's the disgusting that um, aftermath of Reaganomics and Clintonomics staring us right in the face. And we have candidates like Joe Biden saying, um, I got a plan and my plan leaves 10 million without a goddamn thing still because this country says, 
I got mine. That's the best that we can do is leave millions behind. I don't know. That's not a Democrat to me. That sounds like a Republican. And when a re- and when a Democrat says things like, um, you know, doing the things that we need to do are just too pie in the sky, I say, what the hell? There, this is not the Democratic Party. So we keep saying, oh, we got to push the Democratic Party left, push it left. Well, how do you push it left if the people who are standing in the way of progress will not get out of the way. They own this shit. And it's not getting any better. They learn. They don't learn anything from their mistakes. They, you know, we all thought when Twitler was elected, okay, we learned the lessons. That's part of being wise. You learn your own lessons. You don't repeat the same mistakes again and again. But the fact is, the Democratic Party, our the, the bought and paid for Democratic wing of the Democratic Party, the, the fake Democrats, the DLC Democrats, these people, they don't care if Twitler is reelected. They just don't want the middle class getting too uppity. They don't like it, just like the Republicans. They, th- if, if they didn't really uh, feel that way, then w- how dare they propose policies that say, I got a solution for health care that leaves 10 million people with nothing. That's a, that's a disgrace. 10 million people with no health care? And you think that's a, that's a positive? M- people still going bankrupt? The for-profit health insurance racket still sucking profit from our miseries? And you think that's a f***ing success? That's a Democrat? If somebody proposed that to me, I'd be like, I don't know what party I belong to because it ain't these two. Ridiculous. (sighs) And Biden, um, I'm sorry. I'm sick of it. He's going to implode, and this is the problem. I, it's not even a, if it, it's. I mean, I wasn't going to say it's not even about his policy. Yes, it is. Of course, it is. Yeah, he's better than Twitler. But let's not kid ourselves. He made Twitler possible. Him and his ilk. What do they got? What do they got? They brought us Twitler. They made it possible. Not Bernie. Bernie is the one that's standing there like Cassandra yelling and nobody's listening. None of these fuckers are listening because they need their cushy jobs, their cushy paychecks. They don't want a revolution, a, a, a revolution like FDR called for. They want everything the same because either way, win or lose, if Joe Biden wins, they have their cushy jobs. If Joe Biden loses, they have their cushy jobs. That's all that matters to them. They need to keep the racket going. They're not looking at this racket and saying, this shit is a racket. This is disgraceful. This is not democracy. We have to do something about this. We have to do something about a system that leaves one-third of the American people unable to retire. That's not a functioning democracy. That's... That's not a, that's an oligarchy. This is disgraceful. How dare we sign bills and propose, propose free trade or, um, agreements that send millions of jobs overseas and then turn around and say, oopsie, but continue the same old policies. I don't get it. Oopsie. Sorry. Speaking of oopsie, sorry, Tara Jr. How? does this is what i mean how do any um black people oh he's got such support in the african-american community why i'm so confused by that why but then i think i guess we get the government we deserve Terra Buster is recorded live every Saturday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern at the RDT Daily Facebook and YouTube channels and rebroadcast on Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Progressive Voices. 
or anytime on demand on the Progressive Voices app. Support RDT Daily and Tara Buster by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tara Devlin. Remember, we stick together, we win.